level of performance out of me every day, not just in the games, but in practice as well, because they need to count on me, and they got to trust me. You know, it's something that's really earned, and I think you got to show up every day with a great attitude, with a great commitment to winning. You know, there's really no days off, and that carries from spring workouts, summer workouts, Wednesday during week four, or it could be the week of the Super Bowl. There's an intensity to what we're trying to accomplish, and um, you know, if you want to be truly great, you've got to bring it every day. Now, I love that. Well, let me take you back in time. Super Bowl 36, before the final drive, one of the great announcers ever, John Madden, he goes, they don't have good field position. I think they should just play for overtime here. And right then I'm thinking in my brain, I'm like, if only John Madden knew Tom Brady had the ball. Tom Brady has the ball. Would you ever play for overtime when Tom Brady has the ball? I just, I just laugh sometimes because I remember that. And so anytime I'm talking about a young quarterback, I'm thinking, you just never know. But I want to know you. What were you thinking going on the field at that point? You know, that was a big moment, I think, for all of us. I think for me, it's so much of uh, what I had, you know, done in college prepared me for that moment, too. And even though it was my second year in the league, I didn't feel like the moment was too big. I had played at Michigan. There was 100 plus thousand fans at all of our home games. We played Ohio State every year. We played in the Orange Bowl. I won, you know, a lot of big games. So in a lot of ways, I thought, oh, this is just a continuation of college. You know, we go on the field, got a chance to win, going to go make a place to win. And I had a bunch of teammates that really came through in the clutch. And, you know, some lesser known players, J.R. Redmond made some spectacular plays. Obviously, Jermaine Wiggins caught the last little snag route where I clocked it. And uh, Troy Brown made a catch on an in cut, got behind the wheel linebacker in cover two and got us out of bounds. And of course, Adam made the kick. Kick up. Kick is on the way. And it is good. It's good. It's good. And the Patriots are Super Bowl champions. The best team in the National Football League. I have such a vivid memory of all those things because I feel like I'm still living those moments. And I'm still on the practice field every day with my teammates. And you know, I've really never had to grow up. So 43 years old, and I still feel like I'm a teenage kid in a high school locker room just going out and playing football with my friends. So let's talk about Super Bowl 38. You scored 37 points in the fourth quarter. I mean, you even got Vrabel in there. Seymour, the fullback on set right, play action, fight, Brady, fire, touchdown! It was a great game, and what I remember about that game was um, it was very, very hot in that dome. And there was a lot of intensity. And once the dam broke, the dam broke. And it was just a free throw because the guys were exhausted. By the time of the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, man, you're gassed. And it's hard to slow teams down. And if you look at all the Super Bowls, 01, two minute driver, they could say 03, 04, 14, the dam broke. 16, the dam broke. 18, the dam broke. I mean, the key in some ways is never give away the game. I mean, look at Super Bowl against Atlanta. You're down 28 to 3, but in your brain, that's like, okay, this defense can't keep this up. They're not going to be able to continue to rush the same way, and you have an edge there. Sure. Pass rush coverage, you know, the one thing that's unique about offensive football versus defense is, you know, they can rotate pass rushers, you know. Um, they can't really rotate secondary players. I mean, most teams don't. If you're starting corner, you're out there the whole game. Well, receivers can go in and out. You know, you got five receivers that play. So typically, I think the, re- the receivers can stay fresher than the, than the secondary players. But the D-line, you know, if you can get them going, you know, they can wear down as well. The game's not over at the end of the first quarter, you know? It's a long football game. You're going up against the best teams. It's, you just got to expect that it's going to go down to the last two minutes of, of the fourth quarter. And whoever sometimes has the ball last is the team that wins the game. And um, I've been in a part of those in the good times and the bad times. Um, you know, more good than bad, but still regret those bad ones a little bit. You know, it still, you know, pissed me off a little. Coming up, my conversation with Tom Brady continues, and I promise you, no punches are pulled. I really can't help but think that that Super Bowl against the Giants may have been one of the toughest losses of your career.
It is incomplete. And that is it for the Oak Giants. A pass off the New England Patriots. 17 14. The Patriots will not be perfect. They work for 18 games, but not the 19. The Patriots' season is over. Unfulfilled at the end. I really can't help but think that that Super Bowl against the Giants may have been one of the toughest losses of your career because you had the team that no one could ever touch. And when I say that, I mean, it could have been 19 and 0, and you set every record with statistics that year. I can't help but think as a competitor that, that one actually hurts. That would have been, yeah, that's the Tiger Woods winning at the U.S. Open by 15 strokes or whatever. You know, you still talk about it however many years later. And um, I think that was 17. We had, you know, we had beaten some incredible teams that year. We beat you guys. You guys were undefeated. You guys were a spectacular football team. Play you in the dome. You know, it was a good game, but we pulled away in the end. We beat the Giants at home last week of the year. It's just in the end, you know, the one game that mattered for the most, we just came up short. Really, I give the Giants a lot of credit because they earned it. Eli made some clutch plays. Uh, they had a few lucky bounces. They had a helmet catch. But uh, give him credit. Give him credit. Reluctantly, I'll give him credit. <laughs> I mean, there's toughness in how you play the game. And people don't realize your toughness is just, you're so calm in the pocket. And there's chaos around you. And I don't know exactly how to define it for people because you're obviously the greatest just walk, but I think it's because you're so focused on the details I and mean, your throwing motion. Yeah. And such an obsessive part, you know, for me and passing the football is, you know, it's a, I'd say in some ways I'm a very simple person, you know. If I'm really thinking about what I love about football, I love releasing the football and just seeing the perfect pass and the perfect amount of rotation on the football and the perfect ball placement with the perfect timing. And you just wake up in the morning thinking about how can I do that again? You know, and you'd be surprised at how often it doesn't happen. You know, I think that's what people don't realize is, you know, there's, you know, 90% of the time the ball doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. Now, my misses, I would say, might be four inches off, not four feet off. And a lot of people would say, oh, it was a great throw. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I was kind of aiming for his left shoulder, hit his right shoulder. You know, I got to stay inside more and I got to reach more to my target or I got to keep my weight back a little more. Or, you know, my got to get my foot strike down a little faster. And, you know, and those are, that's what I'm processing on every throw. So there's almost an obsessive compulsive part of me that, um, you know, is part of the game. And I'm very fortunate. I love the sport. So it allows me to work and work really, I work, I wouldn't even say hard, just work fun. I mean, your throwing motion, I don't think people really realize it's an incredible thing to see up close. One of those things that's so pure, everything was just sequenced so perfect. And it's hard to describe to people because you're just throwing a football. But if you study it and you try and do it your whole life, you're like, wow, that's what you're trying to attain. I'm dreaming of the perfect throw. And the perfect throw at the perfect time. And even when people, oh, it's a great throw, I'm thinking, oh, it's just a foot right of where I wanted it to be, you know? And then every once in a while, I'm like, damn, that was good. You know, that's, we just do that every time. But that right there shows people the commitment you've had to your craft day in, day out, because you can't attain that if you're not obsessed trying to perfect that. And it was a beautiful thing in its prime. And I think you're still doing it. I'm excited, bud. Yeah, it's going to be great. Have a great game. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Somehow, Tom Brady is playing for a record seven Super Bowl win. Patrick Mahomes is playing to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Who's the last quarterback to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls? Hmm. Tom Brady. There's no question that this is poised to be an incredible matchup between the greatest of all time and the greatest right now. Stay tuned for my final thoughts and my amazing guests and their unrelenting pursuit of what it means to be great.